Good morning. God is good all the time. King David writes, I lay down and slept. I walk again, for the Lord sustained me. Psalm chapter 3 verse 5. Yes, we all woke up to see the new day because the Lord sustained us throughout the night. Let us thank God for our lives and for this new day that He has given us again. As we all know, the whole world is currently in deep crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The number of global COVID-19 cases has crossed 3 million and over 200,000 people died of it. Most countries have imposed lockdowns to contain the pandemic and to save the citizens. The COVID-19 pandemic has virtually brought the global economy to a standstill. The suspension of flight services and other transport and communication facilities caused untold suffering to millions of people across the globe. Indeed, the entire world is currently in a deep socio-economic crisis. Even in the midst of such crisis, those who believe in God have hope in the Lord our God. As such, I would like to speak this morning on the theme, Hope in the Midst of Crisis. I hope and pray that our meditation on this theme will give us hope even in our present crisis. Hope in the Midst of Crisis Why do people consult doctor or go to hospital when they are sick? We go for treatment because we hope to get healed through medical treatment. Hope plays a major role in life, especially in tough times such as this. Even in the midst of suffering, as believers, we have hope in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have hope in God not because we are desperate, but because of who He is and for His promises in the Bible. We shall now examine three reasons as to why we have hope in God, even in the midst of crisis. First, God is in control of the universe. The God of the Bible is the Almighty who is eternal, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He created the universe beautifully. He sustains it and He controls it. Thus, acknowledging the beautiful creation of God, the psalmist declares, O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. Psalm 104 verses 24 and 25. Being the creator of all things and all lives, God is the owner of all things that exist. Thus the psalmist writes, The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and those who live in it. Psalm 24 verse 1. God, being the creator and sustainer, has authority over his creations, and he controls them. Hence, through the prophet Isaiah, God declares, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Isaiah 45 verses 5 to 7 God not only controls the creation and the creatures, but also controls even the devil. As we find in the story of Job, even Satan, the enemy of God, obeys the command of God. In the first instance, 
Saturn ruined Job's property and even attacked his children. But he did not touch Job, for God told him, Do not stretch out your hand against him. Job chapter 1 verse 12 Once again, Saturn attacked Job with boils from head to feet, but he did not kill Job because the Lord told him to spare his life. Job chapter 2 verse 6 This story clearly shows that even the devil is under the control of God the Almighty. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who we believe today is in complete control of the universe. Dear friends, we often claim that we are living in an advanced human civilization, but it is apparent that all is not well. On the one hand, with the advancement in science and technology, life has become more easy and comfortable compared to life in the past. On the other hand, with the same advancement in science and technology, humans have invented sophisticated guns, powerful bombs and missiles that can even wipe out the countries. When there are so many poor people in the world, why do nations spend their money to acquire war planes, warships, and nuclear weapons? Even in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, nations are competing for wealth and power. Is not life more important than anything else in the world? The global scenario is sometimes disturbing and even depressing. Nevertheless, the Bible reminds us that God is in control. God is never shocked, for nothing is out of his knowledge and out of his control. Even in the midst of manifold crises in the world, let us turn to God, for he is always in control. Second, God provides our daily needs. The atheist neither believe in the existence of God, nor believe in divine providence or provision. The God of the Bible, who we believe today, is both transcendent and immanent. In other words, we believe that God, the Creator, continues to sustain and care for His creations and creatures, acknowledging the compassion and provision of God, King David writes, The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. Psalm 145 verses 9 and 16. The Bible teaches us that God created us as both physical and spiritual beings. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. As physical beings, we need daily provisions to live, and God provides our needs. When the Israelites were journeying in the wilderness, they had no way of producing their food. God knew their physical needs, and He supplied them manna in the morning and coils in the evening for their food. Exodus chapter 16. In a miraculous way, God provided the physical needs and food to the Israelites throughout their 40-year journey in the wilderness. Exodus chapter 16, 35. When King Ahab of Israel began to worship Baal, God sent drought to Israel. God told the prophet Elijah to go and hide by the brook Cherit in the east of the river Jordan. We may say that the prophet Elijah was on self-quarantine by the riverside without any means for daily provision. Interestingly, God sent the ravens to bring bread and meat in the morning and evening to the prophet Elijah. Elijah. First Kings chapter 17 verse 6. It is amazing that God provided 
not only one meal, but two meals a day to the prophet Elijah with his divine provision. Our Lord Jesus, who lived on earth as a complete human being, knew the human nature of concern for safety and daily needs. Therefore, Jesus told the people not to worry, but trust God, for God provides the needs of his children. Jesus said to the people, Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33. In this text, Jesus acknowledges that the Gentiles, that is the non-believers in this context, worry and strive for physical needs. But Jesus teaches that the priority of believers is to strive for godliness and trust in God's provision. In other words, Jesus is saying that God will not allow those who believe in him to die of hunger and thirst, but he will provide their needs. As we are aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has more or less brought the global economy to a standstill. The world leaders are very concerned of their economic depression and now working on strategies to revive their national economy. While most business companies have suffered huge loss, some have even closed down, causing immense unemployment problem in the society. We have seen the plights of migrant workers in different cities in our country, India. The COVID-19 pandemic not only affects the government and the private companies, but also affects the farmers and cultivators as well. The pandemic is seriously affecting everyone, especially the marginalized people around the world. Even in the midst of this crisis, as believers, we have hope in the divine providence and provisions. The Bible tells us that God knew the physical needs and provided food to the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. God used the ravens to supply food to the prophet Elijah, who was quarantined by the riverside during the drought in Israel. Jesus assures us that God will provide the physical needs of his people. Let us, therefore, find hope in divine provisions even at this time of global crisis. Third, God is with us in all circumstances. God, the Creator, loves His creation and He has never left His people alone. The book of Exodus tells us that God was with the people of Israel throughout their journey, testifying the continuous presence of God in the journey. The writer of Exodus reports, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Exodus chapter 13 verses 21 and 22. The Israelites could see the presence of God among them in the forms of a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. The writer reports that the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night never depart from the people. In other words, God was always with his people throughout their 40-year journey. Likewise, God was with his people even in the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. In the midst of their despair and crisis, God assured his presence and protection to his people. The Lord said, Do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10 Just as the Lord promised, the people of Israel experienced the presence and protection of God in their lives. Before his ascension into heaven, our Lord Jesus promised his continuous presence, saying, Remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verse 20b. What a comfort for us to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is always with us. Dear friends, we must accept the fact that we are still living in an imperfect world. It is possible that some of us are down with different kinds of sickness, even at this time. As the nation is under complete or partial lockdown, some of us may be feeling lonely. It is very disheartening to see from the news that the number of COVID-19 cases and the death toll rise every day. The high death tolls in the first world countries, despite the advanced healthcare facilities, simply scare the people in other parts of the world. Today, everyone is very concerned and everyone is asking when this pandemic will come to an end. Even in the midst of this crisis, as believers, we have hope for we know that God is always with us in every situation of our life. Just as God was with the Israelites in the wilderness, God is with us in our current crisis. The Lord who assures his presence to the exilic community in Babylon is assuring us of his presence today. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. The entire world is fighting against the pandemic and humanity is in deep crisis. Even in the midst of this crisis, those who believe in God find hope in the Lord our God. The Bible teaches us that God is in control of the universe. As God is in control, all things will be for good although we don't comprehend now. We also noted that God provides the physical needs for his people. Let our priority be trusting in God and praise him for his bountiful provisions. Finally, we have also learned that God is with us in all circumstances. What a comfort for us to know that we are not alone, but our loving God is with us in all our struggles and difficulties. Even in the midst of crisis, let us find hope in God, for He is in control. He provides our needs, and He is with us always. May God grant us hope and strength, even in the midst of crisis. Amen.